I'm Scott Allen Miller. It is the 14th of August, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Nicaragua. Today, originally, I recorded most of the video while we were in Granada and Masaya, and I had one of those days where the camera completely died and got none of the audio. So I've got a few images of me standing around in places, but didn't get any of the thing I meant to record. So I'm doing this long after the fact to do my best to replace it. But we did get some footage of going out and going to the market in Messiah, so we're going to show that and get to that right after the bump. But before we go to the bump, I fooled you. Today, on the day you're watching this, on the 21st, is my wife's birthday. Now, she does not read the comments here on the show. She avoids watching the show because she's pretty sure she would be mad with me all the time. So in, in order to maintain our relationship, she does not watch this show and is always surprised uh, that so many of you do. But if you do happen to see her or talk to her or have a chance to contact her in some way, today is her birthday. And uh, we will be partying this evening, as we always do. We're gonna, but now, we're going to get to the show right after the bump. It is Monday morning and we are in Granada this morning having been for the Ipico yesterday. Now yesterday we showed a little bit of the vlog of doing the Ipico and tomorrow we're going to show more of the Ipico itself so you can see a bit of the show. I do have to mention it is raining on me as I do this. It was not when I came out and I've got to get these done so we're going to do it in the rain. Hopefully it's not too bad. Uh, we can hear the thunder in the background and the dog is freaking out as she normally does. So this morning we got up in Granada. We got breakfast there. I went out and did a bit of filming this morning. This is the actual morning which I'm so frustrated that my GoPros have lost everything that we did. And hopefully I have learned my lesson and I'm now constantly watching the volume meter to make sure that it is actually recording audio. And this is one of the reasons why a lot of people have complained that the front screen on the GoPro does not show anything about audio and I'm not aware of any way to make it show. And it's been a request so many times that that's something we need. It shows it on the back screen. So if you're you know, filming at things, works great, but if you're vlogging, which the camera's not designed for, then you don't know what your audio is. You can check it ahead of time and have a pretty good guess, but you've got to remember to do it. Once I start recording, I just have to hope for the best. And normally it handles things really well, except when it fails and doesn't record anything, then I don't know that something's wrong until I've uploaded it and I'm like, oh no, I lost all of that thing. So that's, I'm, I'm trying to learn that if I watch it, it seems to be that if I see it, it works, and if I don't see it, it didn't. And so at least I have a visual indicator. Hopefully I can avoid the problems. It's still gonna be frustrating because sometimes it takes five minutes of doing stuff to get it to pick up the microphone again. And we're talking about the built-in microphone. We're not talking about like some plugged in thing. This is the media kit microphone. It's part of the GoPro ecosystem and it all comes as a single thing and it's still failing. So we're trying to figure that out. But uh, so we were in Granada, did breakfast. I went around, I did a bunch of time on the square. It was such a beautiful morning. Uh, I'm gonna show a little bit while I'm talking, I'm gonna show some of, of where I was. And um, you know, it was really nice getting a chance to be there because when we lived in Granada, we were so close to the square and so close to the cathedral and all this. This is where we would come down for restaurants. This is where we would come down for shopping a lot of the time. Yes, it's a touristy area, of course, because it's so beautiful and historic, but it, it, it's also very practical if you live downtown. This is where things are uh, just because that's where the tourists would go. So you put them in the same place. Uh, so I used to walk this square all the time, like nearly every day I'd be out on the square and got to know people there. And this was an important part of our life, right? This is one of the places where my kids grew up. And uh, so it was really nice being back and walking around a bit. I always love getting a chance to be back in Granada and Dominica really hasn't seen it in daylight in eight years. Uh, but she only saw it for a minute today and a little bit yesterday and seeing it in the Epico, it's like a diff completely different place. I walked around a little bit and went and saw some of the colonial buildings that are so beautiful um, near the cathedral. I didn't go too far. I mostly stayed right on the, the square, but wanted to get a little bit for you so that you guys could see what Granada looks like because there has been a number of people who are like show Granada show Granada and I really plan to go and do some real Granada footage and, and we're kind of good Gr Granada guides because we live there Marcella lived there like it, everyone goes there on a, at least a semi-regular basis um, but for whatever reason partially because we live there it's not a place we go for exploration we lived there uh, so um, it doesn't really excite us that much but it is fun when we go back so I, I want to get down and do some episodes and show 
a lot of the city uh, that I haven't been able to do before and walk some neighborhoods and stuff because it has totally different vibes than Leon. And that's important, right? These different cities get really different uh, and really nice. <clears throat> so we left Granada this morning and drove up to Messiah, which are super close. Granada, Messiah, and Managua basically all touch. For all intents and purposes, they are a single metro area. So think of them as only barely separated and the, the time between them is like 15 minutes. Like, boom, you're there. And so going to Messiah is very, very easy. We drove in. However, we wanted to go to the Messiah market, which you're going to say, Scott, that's really easy. Tourists go there all the time. No, no, no. We want to go to the Messiah market, not the artist market. The artist market is the tourist market. Really high prices. It's all very fancy. It's completely for show. It's a facade. And if you're a tourist and you're just looking for, for, for touristy souvenirs, yes, yeah, certainly go there. You're going to pay too much, but you're not going to pay a lot. Um, and it's beautiful and it's really well done. And I'll go film that too. I really want to spend a bunch of time in Messiah, but we wanted to find that and, or I'm sorry, we wanted to find the real market, the big one that has good prices and all the artisans because it's one of the two most important markets in the country. It's my personal opinion. I don't, that, that's what I've gathered, right? Oriental in uh, Managua is the big one and the one that kind of the country uses the most, but this one, the Messiah municipal market, city market is uh, very important for a lot of artisans are there. A lot of like in our case, what we're looking for is a shoemaker, an actual by hand cobbler. So that's not something you find very often, even in a place like Nicaragua where they do shoe repair quite often. This is someone who can scratch build shoes that's pretty cool, right? An actual cobbler. Uh, so that's where we had to go. It took us a while to get moving this morning and holy cow is the echo major in here. We are in downtown Messiah and I'm here in Central Park and I'm in the gazebo. So you, I mean, there's no way you can't hear my voice echoing in here, but I wanted to get a little bit of shots of what it's like here because we never make it out to Messiah. Actually, if I move to the edge, it goes away. If you stand right in the middle, it's pretty crazy, but it is a gorgeous town. Messiah is absolutely beautiful. It is the cultural heart of Nicaragua and it is just 20 minutes outside of Granada. So if you're in Granada, you're going to be doing anything there or you need to go between Granada and Managua. Messiah is on the way and it offers a great spot to stop and check out a little bit more of Nicaragua, a place that is a lot less touristy than Granada, but a lot more touristy than, say, Leon, just because people pass through so much. But fewer people stay here, I think, just more people pass through. But lots of parks, uh, there is baseball and churches and all those kinds of things. Of course, it's a major city. It's a very important uh, part of the country. Uh, and it's really famous for its crafts and its markets. Now it has a super touristy artisan, uh, artisanal market, the artisan's market. And then it has the traditional Messiah market, which is where we're planning on heading today. We're working on getting there now, but we're waiting for uh, some people that are coming with us. So we're hanging out here in Central Park while we wait for them. We went to the Central Park in Messiah. We were meeting up with a friend of ours who knows the city a little bit better than us uh, and was going to go with us and provide a little bit of security. Not that it's needed, trust me, it's not, but everybody panics about going to markets. This always amazes me because I just have to say, people go to markets every day, right? Tons of Nicaraguans go as single women in many cases, women with children, um, like vulnerable groups go to these markets and go shopping every day all day for for hundreds of years and sure pockets get picked sometimes sure something bad happens sometimes but these are busy lifebloods of the city they can only be so dangerous or they wouldn't work right it's not like we're going to get shivved in the central market and it's really well known that they tend to be very protective of foreigners because it, it generates bad press, because bad things happen. If someone steals from a Nicaraguan, they're actually less likely to have everyone up in arms. It's more like, well, you should have known better. You should be more careful, right? Whereas if a foreigner's there, they're like, what are you doing? This is gonna impact our, our overall trade as people hear about a problem. And they have been known to like jump on people uh, in, in, in mass as they try to escape having stolen something, right? So there's actually quite a bit of safety to this. And as you go through the market, at no point that I feel anything that would give me pause. At no point was I super crowded and, and couldn't protect myself. At no point was I being followed or bumped or anything like that. The, the stalls are very small. The corridors are tiny. There's a lot of opportunity for someone to sneak up behind you and pick your pocket, of course. And there is some tight spaces and there are a lot of people. All of that is true. So exercise 
heightened caution, do not carry anything unnecessary into the market. Consider not even carrying real money, just, you know, enough for a sandwich or whatever, uh, something you can easily lose and, and, and not be worried about, and then return if you've decided to buy something and get the money and come back if, if that's what you need to do. Um, I'm fine carrying a little bit of money, but I'm not carrying very much. I'm not, I was carrying a camera, didn't worry me at all. Uh, be careful of your phone, make sure it stays in your pocket, maybe put it in a zipper, put it into a non-obvious pocket, do little things, but don't worry, don't avoid the market. Uh, for that reason, it is crazy, maybe avoid it because you don't want crowds or crazy or tight spaces, that's a different thing. Uh, parking was terrible, but finding it was a nightmare. So before we get to that, we were in uh, Central Park for a bit and I did some walking around Central Park. Just doing a little walking around in Messiah while I have some spare time. And here's the center of commerce. It's kind of like the mall, definitely not a very big mall. There's actually a mall in Messiah out on the main road, but this is like the old downtown Nicaragua style shopping center. What's interesting is not the pay less shoes, but there is a good looking, at least from here, a uh, place called The Hangover that is a wings and beer place on the second floor. I bet they've got some nice views out onto the park. It'd be a cool place to hang out. And uh, just doing a little walking. Not gonna be out here for too long. We've gotta hit the market and figure things out down there. So I'm just gonna head back to the car now. But uh, it's fun to come to these new towns. I really hope sometime pretty soon that we're gonna come to Messiah and do like a couple days of really like walking around. There's so many cool things to see and neat architecture and you know, museums, just whatever. Like in Messiah has its whole huge, and the volcano, of course. Like I've done the volcano myself, but I didn't take you guys with me. You guys who live in the little camera, you didn't come along. Um, and uh, it is so cool doing the volcano. It's one of the things you have to do. It's gotta be on your list. And it is on the list of, of 103 things to do in Nicaragua that I made the other day. So if you haven't seen that one, go watch it. But that is one of those, you, you gotta do it. Like you, if you're, I, I'm surprised how few people actually do it, that it's one of the absolute must do things if you're here in Nicaragua. There's so few places that you can go and see an open uh, volcano with lava all the time. And uh, you can't miss it because it's so well done. It's so easy to do uh, in such a great location. I love the architecture of this building. So I'm just coming over here and turning around so that you can see it. There's a bit of kind of 1950s, 1960s modern architecture that I've seen in Messiah. It's definitely built in a different era than a lot of the cities that we go to in Nicaragua, and it gives a very different feel, which I enjoy. Uh, opportunity to see kind of how Nicaragua takes on uh, different time periods. And, you know, for a country that's so small, I think there's a really good amount of variety. Like traveling around the country, you really do have an opportunity to see a lot of different things if you go from town to town. It's, you know, it's not very touristy. A lot of times you're just looking at buildings or parks and that kind of stuff. But it's neat seeing how different parts of the country have approached life so differently uh, in such a small population zone. Um, and, and a generally very well-to-do city. There's a lot of really expensive housing uh, in Messiah. There's also some, some very much not, but, but it is a city with a lot of resources in a lot of cases. And as you drive into Messiah, um, I think a lot of people will be surprised if you're paying attention and have gotten a little bit over the, the Nicaraguan adjustment. I talk about that in our Changing Views video from Matagalpa about a year ago, where um, I was walking around Matagalpa and it really struck me just how much I was in Madagascar going, oh, look at this beautiful mansion. I would love this house. Look at this gorgeous house, look at this house. And when you first get to Nicaragua, there's a lot of walking around going, oh, that, that's so poor. Ooh, how do people live like this? And it takes a while to adjust and go, oh, I'm, I'm seeing something that's built differently than the United States and I'm perceiving the difference as being poor. And certainly Nicaragua is a poor country and there's a lot of very poor housing that's going, that is real. Um, but the amount of it that there that there is is fractional compared to what the most people's impression is. When you actually uh, get to know what the housing is like, um, in many cases you go back and go, oh, this place that I thought was a rundown, burned out shell is actually a mansion that didn't want to tip someone off to pay higher taxes. I mean, I've seen places that really look like they're they're decaying and falling down and you look in the window and it is literally a mansion inside with with 30 foot ceilings and beautiful chandeliers and, and you know, very expensive, completely modernized. Um, and they're hidden behind old facades, especially in the colonial cities. Messiah is an older city, but it is not a colonial city um, per se. As far as I know, uh, Granada is right next door. Messiah was more of the indigenous city, and so it has less of that, but it certainly has a lot of 
that older Nicaragua feel. And the thing that hit me is a lot of architecture from like, I would say the 1960s, and my guess, just guessing from what I saw, that there's a lot of construction happened in Messiah, a lot of growth in the city center in the mid 20th century. And that's where the structures come from because um, I would compare it most to Esteli. That is my feeling that um, the buildings, the style of the architecture, the style of the street layout reminded me more of Esteli event than any other city um, that I've spent time in. So uh, we did that. I walked around a little bit just to get a look at the buildings and what's around uh, the square. And then we went looking for the market. Just looking for the market proved to be quite the adventure. We drove past the artisan market and then probably spent 30 minutes or more driving around in a small area trying to figure out how to get to a market we were never more than two blocks from. It was a bit frustrating and we were all getting kind of on edge and we didn't have a lot of time. I had a meeting that had to be pushed off uh, just to be able to do this. Our friend only had a total of two hours to do everything that needed to be done, which included lunch and some shopping for him, just a bunch of stuff. And it, it was it was a busy day. Um, and he was feeling stressed because he feel like a lot of Nicaraguans are like, you're foreigners, you're in danger, we gotta watch over you. And you really do get a lot of that. People are just like, oh, you're, you're idiots and you're gonna get yourself shivved in the market so they follow you and watch over you and they stress about stuff and it's like you know we're really okay right the worst thing that's going to happen is someone's going to get a couple cord out of my pocket um and uh so it took a really long time and eventually i had to pull over and he and i had to navigate because dominica had the map and and she was ready to kill everybody so we looked at the map we figured out how to get there we got in really tough parking but did manage to get a spot and then went in and the cobbler was like first thing you get inside and he was like right on the right like maybe one stall in i'm like Whoa, okay that was easy there was like a shoe store is the first thing hey do you know a cobbler and he leans around the wall and goes hey you can you take these guys and then he looked yeah so we go in he did like a full measuring of my foot, picked out some materials and colors. It was very quick and easy. So we don't have the shoes yet. We're gonna find out, but he measured my foot. I am a 14, I'm a US 14. Really I'm about a 13 and a half, but no one makes that right. Half sizes stop typically with 11 and a half. They stop generally with 12 and a half. I've never seen a 13 and a half, which is what I really am. So I wear a 14 because 13s really do squish my foot just enough that it bothers me. And uh, so he measured, and we had this really funny discussion. He's like, um, okay, so you realize I have to scratch build every bit of this shoe. The sole, the everything has to be made from scratch. Normally they make shoes from scratch, but some pieces like the sole pre-exist. In this case, he had to make every single thing from scratch because it's too large. They do not sell the materials for making shoes in these sizes in Nicaragua and a lot of places. So we're like, yeah, 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 we understand. I've got the biggest feet in Nicaragua. And he's like, you do. He didn't even give us a receipt. We said, do we get a receipt for this? He's like, no, who's gonna forget you? And my wife laughs. She's like, yeah, biggest feet in Nicaragua. The guy's like, yeah, <laughs> biggest feet of his career. He's like getting up there, right? <laughs> this is not a young guy making shoes as it very rarely is. Uh, so it was cool, we measured it. I've never done anything like that. Custom made shoes is pretty interesting. And I know a lot of you guys are wondering how much is it gonna cost for leather, scratch made, dress shoes here in Nicaragua. Roughly $45. Getting them next Tuesday, so a week and a day to pick them up. Hopefully they're ready. Uh, we have no idea how to talk to them from abroad. So. Hopefully we'll be able to stop in and pick them up and $45. And that's pretty fantastic for scratch made shoes, completely made from scratch like that. Um, so while we were there, we did a little bit more shopping around the market. We had a few little things we wanted to pick up, a few things we wanted to look at. So we walked around a little bit and did a little bit of general shopping, um, which was nice. I've never been at this market, obviously, or I would have had some more idea of how to find it. And um, you know, the markets, they're not really my thing. I know that they look cool on the videos and you guys like them. So I have no problem filming them and I need to go out and do more of them because there's so many. Even here in Sutiava, we have a market that I never show you guys because uh, I never go there, right? And they're, they can be frustrating to shop in partially because the kinds of things they carry are things that extra and heroes, ex expats, don't tend to buy very often and locals tend to buy all the time. Um, so you go in and you're like, this is a whole lot of, I wouldn't buy this, you know, tons of hammocks, tons of baskets, tons of that kind of stuff, like lots of it, um, but also in a lot of food and I only need so many bits of fruit. But like the restaurants go in and they buy their stuff there every day. So, so there's a lot of reason for there to be a lot of stuff going on in the market, but it's not us doing our home shopping there, right? The things we need are typically more like at the mall. Uh, and so, so we did that a little bit, but it's not really my thing. We did buy a few things. 
And they do have really good prices. They have a lot of selection and there's a lot of things like they can get. And there's so much of the market that I didn't see, but we plan to come back sometime in the future. Dominica wants to do a walkthrough uh, and help me do that because she does a lot of shopping there and really enjoys it. So that should be cool. We then went and got lunch. We actually found a full restaurant inside the market, uh, which was actually really good. Like the prices are great. And it was like a nice sit down restaurant. I was that makes it sound completely different than it is. It's like a sit down fast food restaurant, but they had table service. They came and took our order. Whole thing, the menu was good. The food was quite good. I was very happy. We were absolutely surprised by how good the food was inside the market and how there was this full restaurant. You totally think of this type of market as having these little like fried chicken stalls and there's tons of them where you just walk up and they give you a plate of fried chicken and maybe you have like two stools and that's what you do. And that's what you get in like Colombian markets too. That's that's very standard in Latin America and some of the US. Uh, but this was a full restaurant, but it had that front. So you go up as if you're going to this little stand and then you walk past the stand and suddenly there's a door like, oh, I guess we can go inside. It was a huge air conditioned space in the market. Like it was big and enclosed and had multiple rooms and a full kitchen and table service and big printed menus and banners on the wall. I was like, who knew? It was very surprising, but it was quite good. So we had a nice lunch. We had to drop our friend off and we headed into Managua to do some shopping because I had pushed off my meeting uh, till tomorrow and we had some time. We just made it a shopping day because we were out and needed to do that stuff. And it's very rare that Dominica and I are able to get out, that it's just the two of us who are able to do shopping for us. We don't have the kids who are getting frustrated or we have other people who have other things that they need to do or whatever, and that we had kind of set the time aside. So we just made it a Managua shopping day. We just had mall shopping to do. And the really big thing that we're doing, the reason I'm getting the shoes, I guess I never mentioned this. I also need a suit and some other things because we have a wedding coming up, a very formal one. I guess I have mentioned it. So that's the impetus behind this, but I didn't mention it in this video. So we went to the mall and went to Simon, which is the giant department store chain out of El Salvador. This is the powerhouse department store chain throughout the region. Think Grace Brothers from Are You Being Served on British Television. This is a traditional department store where they have a department for everything. They don't have a restaurant in it, but it's very much like the JCPenney's or Macy's or Sears or all those different things. When I was little, McCurdy's and Sibley's and all those things, they have just everything in there. You can go there for everything. They're pricey, but they're really nice. And the customer service is fantastic. I was really, I've never shopped at this before and it was really, really good. It reminded me of the similar ones that we used to go to in Spain, for example. And it was, um, it was, a, it was a nice shopping experience. Uh, I was very surprised to find something like this in Nicaragua, that it was nicer than I've been in a department store in the United States in decades. It took me back to my childhood for real. And uh, we were actually able to find a suit at a reasonable price. Now, keep in mind, this is an American made suit. This was um, uh, Oscar de la, Oscar de la Renta. And, uh, you know, imported, I guess not from the United States, it's imported from Italy or whatever, uh, from, I think from Spain, I don't know. And it was about $150, $160, I think when it was all said and done for a full suit. And I have a larger size that, that's here. So very little selection, obviously. Uh, but we were able to find something we really liked and we got a tie and some other stuff all in. It was less than $200, which is a crazy amount of money for Nicaragua. No one spends that on clothing, but they had designer brands and sizes and we were able to go into a department store and do fittings and all that stuff. And it was very easy and the customer service was excellent and it was a great shopping experience. So 10 out of 10 would do it again. Um, but I'm definitely trying to avoid buying things like that whenever possible. It was a great find. We also found that they sell Cuba Vera, which is the shirt brand I really like. And we didn't think we could get it down here. Now, we may not be able to get my size, but it implies they can order it. But if you're going to be living in Central America, now, especially in Nicaragua, you're going to need to know Simon because it is a chain. It's available a couple places in Managua. Um, and when you need some of those kinds of things, you just need to get that foreign imported department store kind of stuff. They are your go-to place. But they're from El Salvador and they're throughout the region. They are definitely in Costa Rica. They are definitely all over El Salvador. They're in Guatemala quite a bit. And I believe they're in Honduras. I Don't quote me on that. So you have lots of, if you're going to be shopping in the region, even if you're living in another country, this is a department store you're probably going to use. And they're about 102 years old. This is not a new place. This is a really well-established part of the region. But the ones in Nicaragua are only, I think, like 20 years old. Uh, so we did well there. We actually went dress shopping in Simon as well. 
and found uh, some stuff for Dominica. She was really excited by her finds, so we picked that up. And we found uh, these types of cookies from Argentina that the kids really like, and we got some of those, because normally we get them made here in Nicaragua, and they're pretty good, but the ones from Argentina, the authentic ones, look really something. So we got those. Those are pretty expensive. We're not gonna get them very often. While we're at the mall, because we love it, we also went to Burger King and got food for the family so we didn't have to deal with anything later. That just makes our evening so much easier and justifies the trip that much more. And from there, we were on the road and on our way back home. So that was our day shopping. It was very successful. It was neat getting to go to Messiah and see a new city. Um, and uh, hopefully shopping in the city gives you a little bit of idea of what it's going to be like if you're going to live here, what challenges you may face, where you may want to learn how to go, what resources you want to have. Of course, Managua is a giant city. There are different types of shops all over the city, but the big malls really are pretty effective. The department stores are very useful. Um, but if you get to know like if there's specific products that you're really looking for, if you're really into designer clothes or, or whatever, you know, there are clothing shops all through the city. If you have bookstores, there's bookstores all through the city, right? There's all kinds of shopping to be done. Um, but for most of us, we're willing to pay a little bit more for the convenience because figuring out where specialty shops are all around Managua is hard. <laughs> uh, so unless it's something we're buying regularly um, or super specialty, generally we're going to uh, something like the Metro Centro or to uh, the Galerias at Santo Domingo. Uh, they have a great big variety in a single space. Or we're going to something like a Price Mart where we're doing our big grocery shopping in bulk and that kind of stuff. Thanks for joining me. I will see all of you tomorrow.